You know, one thing that's always a constant when you're covering the tool industry is that if someone's making a tool in the U.S., they are going to be loud and proud about it. It's going to say made in the USA. There's going to be headlines about the plant opening up. They're going to make a big deal out of it. So the question is, why is Snap-on making new tools in the U.S.? and nobody has an idea where this plant is. That's what we're trying to figure out. We're gonna jump into it. Of course, what we're talking about here is we're talking about locking pliers. We're talking about essentially the history of vice grip. But real quick, I wanna take a minute and thank today's sponsor and that is Magic Spoon. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I used to really enjoy those sugary cereals and such. But now that I'm older, I gotta you know live that whole low carb lifestyle. And I thought I'd have to give up stuff like that. Well, that is at least until I found Magic Spoon. The Magic Spoon even has a variety pack that lets you try four of their delicious flavors, fruity, frosted, cocoa, and my favorite, peanut butter. But if one has some real fun, mix the peanut butter and the cocoa. That is awesome. I, and I don't know about you, but doing low carb meal planning, the worst part is when you have a busy active day and and that kind of describes most of my days, it's really easy for that to get lost in the mix. And suddenly I'm sitting there at lunchtime going, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? And that's really where Magic Spoon has come in clutch for me. I should just go grab some milk out of the fridge, get a bowl, and you know, before I know it, I'm really, I'm back at it, fueled up and ready to go. It's high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free, naturally flavored, zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five grams of net carbs, and only 140 calories in each serving. And best of all, it lets me have something fun that is 100% guilt free. So click the link below and grab a variety pack and try it today. Be sure to use my promo code TOOLBEAR at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or you can also go to magicspoon.com forward slash toolbear. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's back with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen and use the code TOOLBEAR for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com forward slash toolbear to save $5 today. Now, Vice Grip founded over 100 years ago in the U.S., in Nebraska, DeWitt, Nebraska, uh, actually. And I, and I got to admit, I am, uh, DeWitt, DeWitt, Nebraska is a small town, barely 500 people, and I'm partial to small town Midwest America. I used to live not too far uh, north of there in a slightly bigger town called uh, Fremont, Nebraska. And uh, I currently live in a small town out here in Montana. So I appreciate small towns. I understand what industries and factories like this do for these small towns when they come in and, and the vibrance and uh, prosperity they bring and also what happens to them when they leave. And that's exactly what happened to DeWitt. You know, Vice Grip had been there for years, went through, changed cans a couple of times, ended up being owned by Irwin. And in 2008, Irwin told the, uh, told the residents there that they were shutting down the plant and moving all production to China. And a big shout out to NBC here for their headline for making it look like it was the workers' fault. Workers, sorry, Vice Grip plant moving to China. Like, like they didn't do their chores. So dad's like, that's it. I'm taking away your plant and I'm moving it to China. What a headline there in NBC. And anyway, you, you can't, I mean, for a town of 500 people, uh, over half the people who worked there were employed by, uh, by Irwin at that time. And it was devastating news for this town. Well, about 10 years later, Malco steps in and goes, you know what? We want to make locking pliers here in the U.S. And on top of that, we're going to do it right back in DeWitt. We're going to rebuild the old plant. We're going to get production back up and running. And we're going to make the best pliers, locking pliers, that you've ever seen. And i, I got to be honest, 100% honest, they're the best locking pliers I've ever seen. Now, people may disagree and stuff. You can have your favorites and you, you're allowed to be wrong. It's the United States. We have that kind of freedom here. But these... Malcolm made the best locking pliers I've ever seen. I, I think probably the best that'll be made for uh, a long time to come. Anyway, so they ramped up production. It took them a while to get, you know, they had to get the plant up to date. They had to get all the tooling and everything. And uh, it took uh, a couple of years, two or three years to get it going. And then they were running for two or three years. and Everything looked great. And then out of the blue, we get a notice like this. Eagle Grip update. They were the Malco Eagle Grip pliers. That was the name for them. They say that 
we're sorry. We did our best. We really tried. And unfortunately, we can't do it. We can't sustain this. We can't be profitable doing this. We're shutting down the plant. Talk about devastating news. I mean, here's DeWitt just pulled right <laughs> out of the, the frying pan and back into the fire. Uh, you know, they just got the plant back. They just had their hopes up, and now it's going away. So then the question at this point is, what's going to happen? Is somebody else going to step in? There's all sorts of rumors flying. I thought, well, if there's anybody who can make pliers in the U.S., it's somebody who's already doing that. So I reached out to a contact that I have over at Channel Lock. And I spoke with my, my uh, Channel Lock contact, and I was told flat out, ain't going to happen. Uh, what they said to me was, uh, and I'm trying to get the quote exactly right here, was that uh, if Malco can't get this right, then there's, then we have no chance, which I think is a stunning admission uh, regarding the state of manufacturing here in the U.S. Uh, there's, uh, you'll see screwdrivers made in the U.S., you'll see pliers made in the U.S., uh, but when, unless you're talking about super high-end companies uh, like Wright and Snap-on, stuff like that, most people don't go beyond that. It, it, you know, when you start getting into broaching and that kind of stuff, it, it's a whole nother leap. And trying to build any kind of manufacturing, you just dealing with the EPA on one hand, dealing with uh, not-in-my-backyard types on the other, and then in between you got unions trying to you know, get you for as much money as they can. A lot of manufacturing just can't seem to get a grip here in the U.S. But anyway, Chainlock told me, sorry, we're, it's not going to be us. So lots of rumors abounded as to who it was going to be. And uh, going across the Internet, one of the big ones was that Snap-on. Snap-on the Snap -on bought Malco. I saw tons and tons of posts. Snap-on bought Malco. Then about this time last year, the entire plant goes up for auction. We're over here on Prestige Auction site. By the way, if you want to look through a fun website for all sorts of real heavy machinery kind of stuff that's for sale, you should check them out. But that said, uh, here's the flyer for that sale. Uh, you can see they've got some serious machine. There we go, forging hammers. This is not some light duty, modern kind of laser forging kind of construction thing and that's fully robotic. This is some serious... Uh, you know, stamping and forging here that they're doing. And the plant, as you can see, they've got 550 ton presses uh, going up for auction. As I said, this happened last year in, in May of last year, I should say. Now, that said, I, as I said, I, I had a couple, I got a couple sources into it uh, or, who, or who were into it. And what I was told was this, that uh, they, the entire plant did not go up for auction. They had set aside a quarter to a third of the plant and materials that were being sold to snap on. Now, this isn't a surprise because Malco had been uh, manufacturing, branding their, their pliers as snap on pliers for sale on snap on trucks. So not a huge surprise that snap on would grab up, say, a bunch of, of the, the already made materials. But, uh, you know, because the, the, they'd already produced, uh, apparently had filled a very large order. There are pictures of pallets and pallets on the floors at, uh, at the, uh, the manufacturing plant there in DeWitt of palletized products ready to go out the door. So you can find them at Amazon and a bunch of other retailers and the Snap-on ones as well. In fact, we've got pictures. Somebody ordered, this is over on Reddit, somebody ordered... A, uh, a, a, a set of Malco Eagle Grips on Amazon. And then instead of getting the, uh, the, the Malco ones, they got branded. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. They got branded Snap-on pliers from Amazon under, you know, from the Malco order, which that is, that's pretty interesting. Now, if you want to have some real fun, again, we can, uh, you can go to BidSpotter and you can find out how much everything there at the auction sold for. Uh, we got a U.S. General rolling cart. Uh, last bid was $500 on the rolling cart. I'm sorry, dude, if you bid $500 on a U.S. General rolling cart, uh, what is going on there? Was it full of tools? It must have been full of tools or something. There's a home act went for $500. Bucks. Uh, for, this is un, unreasonable prices. I got to tell you, auctions have been crazy lately. But here's an interesting one for you, just kind of a little tangent here. We got a Hilti rotary hammer. 
we got a Milwaukee quarter drill as well as a warrior drill from Harbor Freight. We got the skill saw, great choice there. It looks like a Milwaukee bandsaw in the background. We got some Makita power tools. That's a Harbor Freight jigsaw. Uh, we got a no-name uh, heat gun. And then look, we got DeWalt, DeWalt, DeWalt grinders. They, I keep telling you folks, DeWalt makes some great grinders. We got some more Milwaukee cordless, some more Makita. Uh, and we just, and just a great selection of just tools from, you know, not brand specific. They were clearly going for, you know, whatever worked best for them. Here we go. Pittsburgh one inch drive socket wrench set. I keep telling you folks, you know, it, even in large manufacturing, they understand the value there. But the point is this, that, uh, they had clearly, you know, made a bunch of this stuff for snap on. They sold off a lot of the stuff, but apparently they'd held back quite a bit of reserve about, I, I think honestly was getting closer to, and I'm trying to go based off the numbers of what people told me, closer to a, a third of, but not quite, of everything that was there. So that leads you to the question of what's Snap-on going to do with a third of a manufacturing plant? What, I mean, what do you do at that point? Because you're, you're not going to replicate what Malco was doing. But if you're only doing it for your for your dealers, maybe you don't need as large a volume. All right. Uh, anyway, let's jump into the rest of this. Now, if you go, as I said, you can go over to Amazon right now and you can buy uh, the six pliers that they had uh, in production. There were uh, they had the set, the 10 inch, the seven inch, uh, either one of those in straight or curved. And then they had the 11 inch locking C uh clamp here and they had two versions of that one so that six in total and i gotta tell you I'm like for 37 to 36 uh, that that's a fantastic deal on a made in the usa uh you know tool there and malco has stated and i don't know how they're planning to do this but it comes with a lifetime warranty and they said that they're going to back up that lifetime warranty somehow apparently they're just they've made enough that they've got them sitting in, in stock they they feel confident they can back them up also, the fact is, these are really well made. You probably won't ever have to warranty them. You'd pr pretty much have to do a lot of damage to them. In full disclosure, Malco did send me some of the pliers. So uh, I've gotten some for free, and you can say I'm biased or whatnot, but I mean, it's not like they're making them anymore. <laughs> I will, however, put a link down to Amazon down below if you want to grab some collector's edition or you just want the best pliers out there. Um, anyway, let's keep going, though, with the... With the uh, the, the mystery here of where this, this factory is and why we even think there is a factory. All right, and we head over to Snap-on, and this is Snap-on's current catalog online. And we got, there's the 10-inch locking pliers, $99. <laughs> this, this is insane. 44 bucks over here for the 10-inch, and 30, where's the other 10-inch? Uh, the, um, the, the 37 or 44 there, depending on whether you want straight or curved, or if you want it to say Snap-on on it, uh, you can pay a hundred bucks. Anyway, uh, so there's the 10 inch, there's the seven inch, but then we get into this and we see these ones that are slightly different. They have the gray kind of paint on them, slightly different form factor. These are the previous version of Snap-on locking pliers before Malco started making them in the US. These are made by Grip-on. Uh, they're a Spanish manufactured company. Uh, they, they're, they're solid locking pliers and some people prefer them. Uh, some people are, again, are allowed to be wrong, but, uh, you know, if that's your thing, some people like this, the grip on, some people don't care for them at all. Uh, it's just kind of a personal choice kind of thing. But when we come down to the bottom here and we scroll down, we get in, there's the 11 inch and then we get these six and a half inch long nose locking pliers and five inch locking pliers with cutter. These are two that were never sold previously under the Malco name. And this is where people start going, there's got to be a new manufacturing plant out there. Someone has got to be selling this thing, right? Well, uh, yeah, you can call the Scooby-Doo mystery machine because right now it's still a pretty big mystery. Now, I've been speaking with Stuart over at Tool Guide. And he's written a couple articles over there. You can go check him out. I'll put a link uh, to his site uh, down below. But he's been trying to follow this up. And his, his solution right now is there is no answer as to what is going on with Snap-on and this manufacturing. And what becomes really curious is the fact that Snap-on this, this month has put out video showing 
the brand new pliers and touting them as we're innovating, we're doing all this exciting stuff. Here's the new mini locking pliers that you've never seen before. So they've got them in hand. They're, they're built, they're clearly got to be coming out of a new manufacturing plant, right? That's what everyone is assuming. Everyone's assuming it's got to be coming out of one of the new plants. Now, as to which plant that is, the going, the going consensus is it's over in Tennessee in another smaller town uh, called Elizabethton. I think that's how they pronounce it. It's not Elizabethtown. It's Elizabethton, Tennessee. I don't know. Uh, anyway, they recently, they being Snap-on, expanded the plant there or in the process of expanding the plant. They... Uh, they they said they were adding 50 new jobs, expanding the the production floor, and they were going to be bringing a lot a lot more manufacturing there to town. So what I did was I tried I admit I tried reaching out to people locally, seeing if I could find anybody who actually works at the plant. I couldn't get anybody to respond to me about that. However, I was able to reach out to two of the individuals in uh, local journalists who had written articles about the expansion of the plant. And here's what I learned. So number one is that this plant has never made pliers before. Number two is when they went in front of the board uh, to get the, 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 the building approval board to get the approval to expand the plant because they had to get permits and everything else. They had to tell them what they were going to be making there. And what they said was they were going to be expanding existing manufacturing. So they were going to take what they have now and they were going to increase that as well as adding chromine facilities. Now, currently, they don't make, they make wrenches, adjustable wrenches, uh, maybe some other kind of wrenches, but definitely adjustable wrenches and ratchets. And they chrome them there as well. The locking pliers don't fall into either of those kinds. As far as manufacturing, they're a completely different process from those two types of tools. And they're, they're nickel satin finished. They are not chromed. At least going based off of the specs and stuff that uh, Snap-on's been announcing. is that they So none of that lines up. And they, to, and they told the board this. So unless a Fortune 500 company is lying to... The, uh, the building approval board there in Tennessee, which doesn't generally happen, uh, then, then Elizabeth, Elizabethton, if I can get the name right, is not where this is going to be happening. And uh, some people talked about uh, Iowa, but Iowa is almost exclusively cabinet making. There is a possibility for some uh, work being done in Ohio, but also in the past couple years, there has been expansion uh, at some of the plants in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is, by the way, where they currently make pliers. So then the question is, what you know? Do we have any other facts? Anything else to back this up? Well, here's Snap on themselves, and this is what's interesting. So we click on this. This is on uh, their LinkedIn. As the only American locking pliers, Snap-on continues to innovate with the introduction of two new designs that outgrip competitors and enhance accessibility in tight workplaces. But what they don't say is they don't say that we're currently manufacturing these. All they say is that they're made in the USA and that they have them. And in fact, we can come down here and they talk about the Elizabethan plant there. And they talk about the two items. The new items are the soft grip adjustable wrenches and the 3H, 3 8 drive dual 80 technology. So there's nothing here that says anything about pliers. And these pliers don't specifically say, in fact, in many of the press releases, they go way out of their way to not say they're, they're, that they are manufacturing them. So where did these come from? Who's manufacturing these? Well, we can see here in their press release here uh, on from February 6th, uh, it says, as the only American-made locking pliers, Snap-on is advancing its line with the introduction of two innovative designs. Let me zoom in on this a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the pretty much what we just read you, and they talk about the LP5LN, that's the 6.5 inch, and the 5 inch. And they talk about the new, uh, the, the patent pending process that they're using for these, uh, to get new leveraged pressure on these to up to 4,000 pounds of clamping force. So let's look then and, you know, cause patents, 
they're, they're public record, right? So let's take a look at those patents. So we went over here, we find the patents, and here's the first one talking about the, the new amplified uh, force applied this it's their they're calling it the power ring that's the marketing concept i don't know exactly where in this diagram said ring lives but the point is this this was applied for in july 20 july 28th of 2022 and we have a second patent over here june 28th of 2022 those are well before malco notified anybody that they were shutting down the plant so this is not they've that's when they applied for the patents. They clearly had been in development for some time. So it looks like, once you add this all up, it looks like Snap-on has been doing work designing new locking pliers, clearly with the intent of manufacturing themselves, maybe outsourcing it to Malco. And then Malco notifies them that, hey, this isn't working for us. We can't make money doing this. So we're going to be shutting it down. Then the question is, well, what happens? I, I think right now that uh, the, the, the obvious logical conclusion is that these pliers were manufactured prior to the closure of the plant. That would explain why uh, by Snap-on isn't announcing, hey, there's a new plant. Here's, here's where we look for stuff. Uh, Stuart and I, uh, Stuart from Tool Guide, have, have done some really deep research into like what jobs are being hired, what uh, what announcements have been made? We've been bringing our our own personal sources coming out of this, and and Snap-on will not in any way, shape, or form uh, say, hey, they're being manufactured here. And at that point, what I can only assume is that these are stock that they built up, knowing the closure of the Malco plant was going to happen. But so, is it true? Is it did did Snap-on buy Malco? No, Snap-on did not buy the company Malco. But Snap-on clearly did pay Malco probably a bag full of money and go, here, make us enough pliers to get us through this until we can ramp up our own manufacturing. And also, we're going to buy the pieces that we need, which again, I think leads me to believe that this is going to end up in Kenosha, where they already have facilities that they've expanded in the last two to three years, where they've already been doing pliers manufacturing. They have the people there, the know-how, the machinery already, so they can add on to that, that factory floor and keep doing the same kind of work that they've already been doing, rather than starting something fresh and new over in Eliz Elizabethan or in Ohio or wherever. And I want to thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget, you can get $5 off using my coupon code TOOLBEAR. Uh, just go to magicspoon.com slash forward slash TOOLBEAR. Links are and everything are down below. Thanks again for stopping by. If you like what we did here, leave a comment, hit the like button, smash the subscribe, ring the bell on the way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.